business with a servant's heart. Servant's heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take servant's heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life, we're going to speak on business You're gonna shine bright, we are going to witness Business with a servant's heart, servant's heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks servant's heart. Listen to the podcast Steve Ramona. Brainshare Business Mentors proudly presents Brainshare.us, the ultimate business education platform, delivering the proven systems, processes, tools, and knowledge that empower you to build the business of your dreams. With 13 high-powered courses encompassing over 240 lessons accessed online on your schedule. Running a business is the hardest thing you'll ever do. We've helped thousands of business owners gain the leadership, communication, and business skills needed to build the business of their dreams. We can help you. Choose your learning path. Scuba Squad is the premier membership program for today's business leaders with access to all Brainshare material and double our money-back guarantee. Brainshare Basics, the ultimate business framework course, a hard-hitting 13-week program to lay the necessary foundation to build the business of your dreams or take individual courses as you need them. Every course has dozens of lessons with video, practical exercises, precise documentation, and the opportunity for direct feedback from a Brainshare mentor. All programs have our exclusive 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked, don't wait. Choose your path and start today. Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose. Serving others and achieving success. Yes, you can serve and still be successful in such a bigger way. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to learn how to do business and live life to make an impact in the world. I want you to think about, as you listen to my incredible guest today, how will you serve today and what impact will you create from that service? I want to thank my two sponsors, Brainshare.us, build a business that works without you. Discover how to create a self-sustaining business that thrives even in your absence. You can have a business that doesn't tie you down. We'll guide you through the steps to build an enterprise that operates smoothly without your constant oversight. Visit Brainshare.us to learn how to set the foundations for a business that stands the test of time. With Brainshare Business Mentors, you can build a business that works without you. And then PitchDB.com. How would you like to be a guest on 3 million podcasts or speak at 11,000 conferences? or be in radio or TV, or have an article written about you in a newspaper or magazine. Well, PitchDB can do that for you. With the click of a button, you can throw a pitch out there to thousands of people and build your thought leader platform and become an expert in your field. And with that being said, impact is a big thing, as I talk about in my monologue and throughout my shows. This is an impact that is all over the place, but people don't realize it is an issue. I want to say issue, but it's happening every day. And you're going to hear some stats from my guests that are going to blow you away. Gilda, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm I'm really honored to be here. Well, I'm honored to have you because autism is the focus of this podcast today. And I want you to throw out some stats that are going to really shock some people about autism that you have. Well, let's see. Um, according to the CDC, uh, I think these are stats are from last year. Uh, so they, who knows, they may have even, uh, increased, but one in 30 here in the U S gets newly diagnosed with autism every year. Now that's only autism that doesn't take into consideration the other neurodivergent diagnoses, for example, Tourette syndrome, ADHD, so on and so forth. It doesn't take into account the physical disabilities, so when you factor those in, you're probably inching down more towards one in 20. Uh, and worldwide, you've got, oh, in excess of 75 million diagnosed 
with autism that only the di ones that have been diagnosed. That doesn't count those who have not been diagnosed, of which there are many. That's big numbers. Just let's take the diagnosis. Yeah. I like to use 10%. You add 10%. That's another 7.5 million. Could be more, could be less, but you know, we're talking over 80 million people with this diagnosis in this situation. Right. What is their biggest problem? Uh, the biggest problem is lack of resources and access to those resources, as well as an appropriate means of connecting and communicating. That I think is, is really the, the biggest issue. Um, and it's one that ARP is uh, hoping to address in a big way. Autism can be, it scares me, but it could be uncomfortable for people that don't have autism. And I've seen it. I've learned I was one of those. And how do I talk to them? I react. And I've learned just they're humans. And they love to be loved. I think they're the smartest and most beautiful hearts in the world as autistic kids, autistic adults, because they just want to love. What's some advice you can give somebody when they need somebody autistic anywhere in the, you know, advanced parties, whatever? Well, the first thing is don't come in with any preconceived notions. Don't judge. There's an old saying that's very, very true. When you meet one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. It's, it's just a neurodivergence. It's just somebody who operates a little bit differently than you do. I, I have a personal theory that it's very appropriate, I think, to share at this moment, which is I think that labels are okay from the standpoint that they serve to shorthand language. When you say autism, you have perhaps a broad general 50,000 foot view of the challenges that this person might be dealing with or facing. <clears throat> but the <laughs> when you go when you go beyond that, you again, you you can't judge because everybody is different. And my own personal philosophy, if you will, is that I hope that eventually in the very near future, labels like the autism spectrum will become things of the past. We are all part, in my opinion, of the human spectrum. It's just that we all vibrate a little bit differently. I mean, come on, Steve, we all have our shtick, right? We all have our foibles and our faults and our idiosyncrasies. And it's just about where do you vibrate? on that spectrum. Are you infrared? Are you visible? Are you ultraviolet? And it, and it's just about finding out where that other person vibrates, where their wavelength is, and finding the best way to meet them there. How do they communicate? How do they respond? How, you know, do they have certain um, idiosyncrasies about, you know, about listening or about touching or about loud noises or about having to have things in a certain order or whatever it is. I mean, we all, we all have something. So, so again, I'm going to underscore, don't come in with any preconceived notions. Don't judge because what you're somebody with autism, you know, so they have autism. What's the difference between that and somebody with Tourette's syndrome or somebody with diabetes or somebody with cere cerebral palsy or somebody with a heart condition or somebody with, you know, I mean, it's it's just another thing. Yeah, it's just labels, which autism is an outwardly label and outwardly sign because you can see the autism, but you can't see cancer. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see somebody pregnant, you know, well, they're pregnant, right? You know what? I'm going to disagree with you. You can't okay. always see autism I oh mean, okay when you when you when you in fact there are many people um who have the diagnosis of autism who and I'll, and I'll just mention some famous names um you know and you tell me if it's something that's visible or invisible this is something that that actually I was a guest on Jeff Pearson's show the the invisible condition and we discussed this very thing um you know, did you know Daryl Hannah is autistic? Did you know Bill Gates is autistic? Did you know that um, Jerry Seinfeld is autistic? Did you know? I mean, yeah. I, I can I can go on and on and on. Um, and you know, it, it's again, 
every everyone presents differently if they have an autism diagnosis. Um, they have different comorbidities. Um, some, you know, are, are affected uh, intellectually. Some are affected uh, in terms of their pragmatic, their social skills, their expressive skills. Some speak in, in a certain way that is um, not necessarily typical. So, I mean, it, it, there's so many different variations. Um, and again, it's, it's a very, very individual thing. Appreciate you correcting me. And that's why I love being a host because I make the mistake. Somebody might be thinking the same thing and you just answered that question. And, and I love learning on these podcasts. So I just learned something that's very powerful. So we've got the overhead view of autism, mm -hmm. but what you do and what the real problem is when this is found, where do they go? Where are the resources? How do we handle it? Talk more about how you do that with ARP. All right. Well, if I may, um, if we have time for me to tell just a little bit of the genesis yeah. of of why I do what I do that that often underscores um what I'm what I'm going to describe when I tell you what ARP does. So, um I I am a mother of 3 and my youngest uh has the autism diagnosis. Um and when we first received that diagnosis, he was 3 years old. He's now 26. And but I remember that feeling very vividly. Um, kind of like being out in the middle of the ocean, treading water with no land in sight and no idea what direction to swim in. And uh, all these questions race through your head. Okay, where do I go? How do I get? How do I apply? Um, who do I ask? I, I don't know. All I want to do is make sure my kid has what they need. And um, so, you know, I, it, it and I, I just remember asking, you know, having a question and and calling half a dozen people with the same question and getting six totally different answers and having no idea which one is right, if any of them were right, and ending up right back where I started. And of course, the one who ends up suffering the most is the child because they're not getting the supports that they need. And I watched all the other parents around me, you know, going round and round in circles and reinventing, reinventing the wheel and having the same frustration and anxieties and, and issues. And so fast forward a few years ago, I realized I had this epiphany and I realized, okay, why for this enormous population? And we talked about that at the beginning, how large this population is that's still marginalized, that's still underserved. Why is there no central knowledge and resource base? Knowledge is power, right? Yep. Why is there no central knowledge and resource base that a person with a neurodivergency, uh, a parent, a caretaker, an educator, a service provider can go with a question? and at least find the beginnings of the answer of what direction to start swimming in. <laughs> okay. So great. It just didn't exist. Um, everything was scattered all over the place. There are resources out there, not enough, but there are resources out there. But I'll tell you, you know, you have to be a detective to find them. And when you find them, you know, is, is this really the one I need? Is, is this, does this really work? Is this really something that would be good for my child? <clears throat> so, <laughs> so when you're the parent of, when you're a parent period, but when you're the parent of a neurodivergent child, you don't have time to be a detective. So anyway, I had this epiphany and thought, all right, it doesn't exist. I guess it's going to be up to me. I'm going to make it exist. I'm going to, I'm going to create this knowledge base. And at the time I chose a podcast, the autism resource podcast, I created that to become this knowledge and resource base for this particular community. And when I first started out, I had no budget, nothing. And I was begging people, please come on the podcast. It's really a great idea and it's going to help so many people. And now a few years and 135 plus episodes later, uh, I've had Temple Grandin, I've had California state senators, I've had the head of the Mind Institute and Truly, Steve, I, I am humbled and I am honored to say that it has grown into the resource and is continuing to grow into the resource that I envisioned it to be. And so all that said, last year, I had another epiphany and said, OK, the podcast is up. It's running. It's viable. It's working. And it's not enough. I've got to do more. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Autism Resource Podcast became Autism Resource Project. And I put together 
an incredible board of directors without whom I am the first to say this could not be happening. They are amazing individuals that bring all sorts of resources and talent to the table. And I'm going to name them real, real quickly because they deserve to be named. Debbie Carlitz, Christopher Cope, Chris Latham, Chris Monaco, Ryan Denich, Patrick Rood, Jack Derokjian. I mean, and if I've forgotten anybody, please forgive me. Um, we also have an amazing advisory board. Um, and they, we've all come together to create this project that is very soon going to be a global 24 seven online resource for this community that in addition to the podcast, so if you're looking for information, you'll go to the podcast, all right? But then there will also be a place where you can go, a library if you're looking for articles, webinars, hard to find resource materials, guides. There will be a community network with a real-time Reddit-like feature where people can interact, exchange information and ideas and, and so forth in real time. But there will also be a calendar. So if you happen to be in Okaboji, Iowa, and you're wondering, I wonder you know, what's going on in, in my area that might be of interest. Are there conferences or events that I can attend? You'll be able to find that out. And there's also going to be a marketplace geared specifically for this community. So if you're looking for a book on autism or you're looking for adaptive clothing for your child with cerebral palsy, or you're looking for adaptive toys, or perhaps you wanna make an appointment with a behavioral therapist, you'll be able to do that. And uh, I, I just, I can't say how, ex how very excited I am about this creation. We are um, a nonprofit. We are a 501c3. And um, so we are just beginning in our seminal stages. We are looking, obviously, for donations, but we are looking for people who want to volunteer. We are looking for people who want to, perhaps they have something to offer this community and they want to be a guest on the podcast. Whatever it happens to be, if you want to reach out, and uh, let us know that you want to be involved on some level. All you have to do is email autismresourceproject at gmail.com and somebody will get back to you. Probably me. <laughs> yeah. Passion is just flooding out of you and I love it. <laughs> You're bringing hope. And, and that's a huge word in this autism and all the different things that you mentioned, especially when it comes to kids. What kind of hope are you bringing? Well, the hope that the people with a neurodivergent diagnosis or a physical disability have the resources, the opportunity, can get the support to live their best lives. Whatever it is that they want to do, that they need, whatever supports that they're looking for, they're out there and we want to help them find those. We want to help them get on that path to live their best lives, whatever that might look like for that individual, wherever you might happen to be. As I said, um, or initially we are we are focusing on the U.S., but I will tell you that the podcast gets downloaded from I think the last count was eleven or twelve different countries. Yeah, I can see. That. Um, and you know, and, and, and it's just going to grow and spread and get bigger. We, we, I have to say, you know, I'm sad to say that there are some countries that just have no resources at all. And if somebody has a child with an autism diagnosis that basically just send home, you know, go home. We, 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 we can't help you. We have nothing yeah. to offer. And we, we want to offer at least one solution, a solution to that dilemma as much as we can. I love this born from your life experience with your son. Son, right? Yeah, son. And a lot of businesses have started that. A lot of nonprofits have started that. Unfortunately, we're human. I think it's fortunate too that people want to know benefits. How's your son doing today? He's 26. He's doing fantastic. He's living in his own apartment with support. 
He is studying animation and video game design. That's his passion. That's what he wanted wants to do. And um, he's he's doing great. He's he's independent. He's happy and he's thriving. And that's what it's all about. I like that a lot because it was the resources you found doing your detective work that he's thriving. Maybe not all of it. I'm sure. You know, well, a lot of it is due to him. Yeah, uh, exactly. It, you know, Amen. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, a lot of it is due to his own persistence and intelligence and determination and wherewithal. Absolutely. But the point is he had the supports that and has the supports that he needed and needs in order to access those things within himself. It's so powerful because you're replicating what worked for you. And of course it worked. Why I wanted you to talk about it. Plus I'm glad he's doing well. Um, you can help so many others with the same journey. That's, that's the whole point. That's why I began this journey myself is because I want to make other people's journeys a lot easier than mine was. Yeah. That's God bless you. What's the future of ARP? I'm sorry. What's your future ARP, the Autism oh. Resource Project? What's the future look like? Uh, the future is just continuing to grow and expand and 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 get larger and, and more robust as a resource for this community. Um, eventually, I hope that, you know, we we are the the one stop shop that can direct people to where they need to go, what they're looking for, whatever supports, resources, information it is that they need, that if we don't have it directly online on our website, we can point you in the right direction. Yeah. And autism, special needs, all that takes a lot of time. It's time consuming, right? And that's what you're helping with. So I want to ask an interesting question. What does Gilda do for fun? <laughs> Oh, that is, well, this is fun for me. I will yeah. tell you, it's, it's I'm, as you can tell, as you said, I'm very yeah. passionate about it and it's very fulfilling for me. But uh, I love to be outdoors in nature. You know, I love to hike. Um, I love film. You know, I have a background in, in media, film, television. Um, and uh, so that's uh, another delight of mine is to see a film that's really well made and well done. Um, and, uh, you know, love reading books, love educating myself. I love learning, yeah. you know, so, you know, you'll find me reading a book or going to a museum or, you know, checking out an interesting webinar, that sort of thing. Well, I'm going this direction because what you just said is so powerful. I want you out there listening. You have autistic, special need, autism, autistic kids or adults or special needs, Look what she just said. She's enjoying life, enjoying her son, enjoying her family because they had the resources. I want you to think about that when you go over this show, because I want you to listen to it a few times. Any last remarks? Uh, yes. I want to say that um, if you, you as a parent are your best judge, if you think that your child might have a particular need, um, might have, might, might need a particular support or anything. If you, if you, if you notice something that about your child that you think bears further investigation, don't let other people tell you, oh, you're crazy. You know, oh, they'll outgrow it. Um, you know, early, early diagnosis is so, so, so important because that opens up the door to so many things that your child might need in order to thrive. Um, you know, I, I, I will tell you that there are so many people who don't get that diagnosis until they're in their 20s, 30s, even 40s, especially females, because females are so good at masking and at imitating, mm. um, whereas males tend to be a little more outward. Um, you know, about their, their ex expressive needs and so on and so forth. Um, and the people who finally get that diagnosis, they are so relieved because all of a sudden 
they have an explanation. Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I went through that in school. That's why I couldn't do X, Y, Z, or that's why, you know, I don't like ABC or it, it, it just, it gives them a whole new perspective and a whole new outlook. And as I said earlier, knowledge is power. Information is power. And the more you know um, about yourself, the more you can do for yourself and the better position you will be to seek out those resources and supports that you need. I can't think of a better way of ending this podcast. God bless you. And please reach out to her. I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, you are a blessing to your family, to your son, but all the other people that you're going to be out there helping. Um, if you have any questions at all, she gave you the website, the, the way the way to reach out and use this podcast. It's got a forward and a reverse button for a reason. You go to the five minutes of something she said and listen to it over and over until you really know what it is. She talked about educating yourself. Educate yourself with this podcast. I'd love for you to, and Gilda would too, to listen to this whole podcast. But if 10 minutes change your life or three minutes change your life and get you to call her or answer a question, we're going to be very happy. And that's the whole goal of any podcast, including yes. autism, uh, autism uh, uh, podcast, autism resource podcast. If I, if I, if I may, Steve, Please. just real quick, um, autismresourcepodcast.com. Uh, is where you can find the podcast directly. And again, autism resource project at gmail.com is where you can reach out to us. And Steve, I just want to thank you again so much for having me on your podcast as a guest and letting me tell the story. I really appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure because this we should we should be doing this together. And with that being said, don't forget about my TV show, Together We Serve. 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. And um, you're probably going to see Gilda on my next TV, on a TV show because she's serving a big, big community in so many great ways. By the way, how about a swag? How about a T-shirt, hoodie, hat? This is doing business with a servant's heart. There'll be a link in the chat, plus a link to access Gilda at any time. If you can't get it on the podcast, you'll see it in the show notes. And as I always say, I really thank you for watching or listening. And we'll see you on the next episode of Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Thank you all.